Welcome back YouTube subscribers. Today we have another great video. I want to welcome all my friends, family that are here uh, watching this video. If you like these videos and you're on YouTube, please like them, subscribe to them. There's a lot more coming. If you're on Facebook, like them there, tell your friends, share them with other people. Today I want to talk about uh, fiber optics versus copper. Why would I want to talk about that? For many reasons. I have have a uh, fiber optic converter that really is awful. Um, it's it's so slow. Now, what I mean by uh, fiber optic versus copper, there's some things that you should not bother to update. Okay. One thing that you wouldn't want to update is fiber is copper. Well, let me show you the piece of equipment, okay? This uh, piece of equipment I've got is a fiber optic RJ11 converter, and it also has uh, a lot of other cool things on it. I mean, well, yeah, I could call them cool or not, but it's uh, the brand is uh, Guantai. I'm looking at my screen because I can't really pronounce it. <laughs> I had to use uh, Google uh, Translator thing here to help me pronounce this stupid thing. But anyways, uh, one thing that is very poor about this piece of equipment, and I bought this off from Amazon, and I bought it from uh, China. I, I'm, one of the things I bought it for was for the fact that my phone line out in the garage froze and broke underground. I didn't want to have to to put run a whole new cable. I mean, well, I did because I couldn't get this to work. Come to find out after buying this, and it probably took me six months after buying it, that uh, this was a fiber port right here. Let me show you. My finger's right on it. Now, it's a, it's a weird cable, okay? I, I have fiber optics in my house, and they're standard. But this thing is, is so weird. There's nothing. I haven't seen another piece of equipment come with this type of a FC connector. Anyhow, some of the things I don't like about this is the fact that it has a little diagram on it. And it's alright. But the fact is that it says, uh, uh, pick up phone. Pick up phone? What do you mean, pick up phone? Well, instead of saying receiver, which is what I put on this unit, I actually put a, a sloppy sticker that said receiver on it. And I also have another one. This is the transmitter, and it has the same uh, diagram. It says connect line. Ah, okay, I kind of understand that. That means transmitter. But why didn't it just say transmitter, like I put on there? I just put on there transmitter. Well, the negative thing about this fiber optic unit, and I just looked at this online they're no longer for sale. Probably the reason is because I've had a hard time with the company. I wouldn't give them a positive review. Uh, I know I'm kind of going off the hook and around the corner and back again. But uh, this company was pretty pathetic. So I wrote a negative review on Amazon about this thing. And I had probably about, I don't know, 30 or 40 different emails back and forth, back and forth, trying to get this to work. No can do. Finally left a bad review on Amazon, and they called me up one day. I couldn't believe it. Hounding me to take the bad review down. Uh, pathetic folks. Uh, you don't hound me. Don't you even dare. Where do you get off calling my personal, my, my private phone and bugging me about my negative review? This thing sucks. Why would I uh, put up a positive review? I don't care if it hurts your business. That's what he was whining to me about, like a little baby. Anyhow, the thing that I found out that's wrong with it, well, it's not wrong, it works, but the downside to this particular unit is that it's slow. And it's 
Well, let me give you an example. So what I use, well, well, actually, I did a test with this on my voice over internet service. It's a basically just a box with phone service. I, we don't have landline anymore. Uh, landline would have probably worked perfectly fine with this. Not voice over IP, okay? Uh, it was such a delay. And what I've had it hooked up to is a remote control system in my basement. So basically all I have to do is, well, I have it hooked up to my, my uh, PBX system. Basically that gives you multiple lines in one house or business to call each room from another room. It's too technical to get into all that. And you folks don't need to know why I have it. Except that it just... I, I had it. I just want to mess with it, you know. Anyhow, uh, I didn't really want to have to call out of the house to uh, turn on my PC downstairs. Because this... Actually, this screen right here that you see lit, that computer is controlled by the telephone, which was controlled by this. So one of the tests I did is I wanted to see if what it would do when I called from an outside line. It was pathetic. And this is why I say that you cannot convert old copper to fiber optics back to to copper. It's useless. Why not just use copper? Uh, so the thing would call up and it says, you know, enter password. Well, that's what I would call when I do it in-house, that's what it would say. Well, instead of saying enter password, it just say password. It didn't say enter password. So, it was so slow, uh, it wasn't even picking up sometimes. And it was the cause of this box uh, making it not work. Now when I plugged the copper cable back into the PBX and to the straight into my uh, my voice service provider this box, it worked perfectly fine. But as soon as I plugged this puppy back in, ah, uh, no. So what happens if you use this at your house or business, it slows down. Uh, I can't really explain why. I mean, I do have an explanation, uh, but it might not be the right one, but this is my uh, theory of how it works. Um, is that this is basically a little computer. Uh, let's see here. This, okay. So this is my transmitter. So... It, it puts your, both your lines in, so it has a, a spot for uh, phone 1 and phone 2 for two different lines. And then it has your Ethernet and your fiber optic port. So basically what it does and why it's slow is because it's a little computer and it has to convert your copper cable to fiber then back to the copper. That's slow. Now when you're doing networking, like fiber optic networking, that's all right. If you're going from fiber optics to fiber optics, then then your endpoint switch is has fiber optics plus uh, Ethernet. That's fine. That's the way these this room is set up here. It goes from fiber optics to fiber optics, which is my my base switch in my basement, and it works perfectly fine. There's no slowdown. But this thing slows down tremendously, especially for an old copper phone. Now, I have nothing wrong with copper. And I've got nothing wrong with fiber optics. There's, there's, a, there's, there's perfectly good reasons why to have fiber optics. But not to use old technology on new technology doesn't work very good. It's, how should I say, incompatible? I mean, well, it works. I can't say it's not totally incompatible. But it's just slower and it's more aggravating than it is just to have a copper cable. I do understand why they have this particular unit is because you can send up your your phone line uh, a mile away. Well I don't have any reason to send it a mile anyways but 
that's what this thing is able to do. Not I. I think I might just go back to to the copper cable for the fact that it's faster, and it's more reliable than this thing is. And when you hit when you make a call uh, onto this unit, this thing actually you can hear like a little relay clicking. It goes click 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 click. So it's slow. That's that's how I know somewhat of it's slow. And even if I didn't hear the relay clicking in there. I know it would be slow just by how quickly the phone answered. And I did that test. I called it through one of my other phone lines, called another phone, and the ringing inside my, my handset was faster than what I heard on the other end of the, where the phone was connected to this thing. So let me show you the fiber optic cable I've got. And I got so many different fiber optic cables, but I want to show you what this one uses. So this is my fiber optic cable. It looks kind of messy, but it's not. It's all, it's, I have it set up so I can just run it. But, uh, so on here is, I, and this is what, I had to buy one, a cable that had two of these ends. I only needed one. And that's one thing that was pretty rotten about the, the not the demonstration, but the uh, uh, description on Amazon is that they didn't tell me what fiber optic cable to go with. They just said fiber optics. They left me thinking that I could plug my Ethernet ports in to connect those two units and make them work perfectly fine. Not the case. The Ethernet's only for your network, so you plug one end into your switch, the transmitter into your switch that you want to uh, transmit your network to the other point. And that's the way it works. But it, And that's the other thing about this. It's not bi-directional. And what do I mean not bi-directional? So, like most, like all copper cables, you can send, like if you have, uh, like take Ethernet for instance, you've got eight leads, and standard uh, phone cable you've got four. So that means you can have, let's see here, uh, up to, I, I'm not sure, four lines I think. I, don't don't quote me. I'm not. I'm, I can't do my math that fast in my head. But uh, you know, but with uh, eight leads, you can get a bunch of things, and you can actually go back and forth. So, if your transmission is over here, you can send it over here. And if you have something over on this side of the room that you want to transmit to this side of the room, it can send it. This box that I've got is not bi-directional. You cannot plug your uh, input on the transmitter and then have it and, and you know it will go over to the receiver but you can't plug an input on the receiver and have it go back over the transmitter uh-uh it's only one way and I have no idea why they got it set up that way but it's not it wasn't useful for me because I want to have bi-directional and that's the the good thing about copper cable is that you can go both ways either direction on different pair of leads. Now I know this is going over for most of you and you're like well why do I care? Well if you ever run across something like this it's not worth it. I mean this cable is used for many other things than just that that, uh, that phone box I've got. But if that piece of equipment dies this cable is useless because this is some kind of FC I don't understand what the meanings are of this cable. That's what this, what they had it listed on Amazon, was FC, and it just screws in. It's all right. It, it connects just fine, but the fact is, is once it's gone, and there's no other equipment that I ever found that works with this cable. It's only some foreign piece of equipment from China. Now, if you want to do phone and you want to transmit it, you know distances I, I just recommend running I don't know how far you can run a phone cable but I mean if you're just in a house I mean you can run a hundred feet and you're fine you no know, worries and there's several different uh, types of well I don't mean types but just categories of of uh, copper and that's another thing you got to think about when you're going to be running uh, phone let me show you the the kinds of copper I've got so here I have an Ethernet cable. It is solid copper. Uh, it's either Cat5 or 6. I'm not quite sure. 
There's no reading on it. Well, it's there is some some print, but it's so washed off now I can't tell. But this is solid copper, and this is good cable. And on this other one I've got, it's just phone cable, and it's twisted. Now the only thing with twisted cable is if you have DSL, this is not good cable to run your DSL signal through. Why? Because the stranded stuff is too small for DSL. Now I know many of you probably have fiber optics by now. You have uh, cable service uh, and you're using big thick cable. But there's some people that are still out in, in no man's land that has to have DSL or some sort of satellite. Uh, I mean, satellite doesn't use phone cable, it's just DSL. But you don't want to use stranded cable on your DSL modem. I've seen people and I've talked to people that say, hey, my DSL, my internet slows down and it speeds up. And, it, and, it, and I can't determine what's going on. And I asked them, I said, well, what's in your house? I said, are you uh, connecting uh, stranded phone cable to your modem? And they look at it, and they're like, well, how do I tell? Well, I can tell you how you can tell is take this cable, for instance. So I'll show it to you. It's flexible. It's really, and it's flat. That's why it's stranded, because it's so small. Now, with the... Now this is not phone cable, but there is phone cable that is category three, and it and when you buy it, it says DSL on it, and it's thick enough to to run your DSL uh, signal through, which this thing will just deteriorate very quickly over time because it, it just can't handle it. So that's the the. My th my thoughts on on cables is if you're if you're going to do phone, just use copper. I mean, I know they're trying to outdate copper and all. That. I don't think it will ever outdate copper. I mean, you're still going to have 110 uh, cables that are copper, <laughs> you know, and, and they're still going to have these phone cables kicking around because there's still people are using those phones. And really, the services they've got now with VoIP. I mean, whatever service you want, whether you want, uh, oh, I don't know, I can't remember, uh, Oma or Umi or how you say it, or oh, there's Vantage or there's, you know, cable service, they all have phone service that still goes through these uh, cables. And I highly recommend these. And I don't mean this cable particularly, but just the box. I'd rather have uh, my phone service over the internet compared to using a cell phone which cell phone service here sucks and and if you watch my previous videos you will know what my opinion in of wireless is it's pitiful I mean yes there are some applications that you can use wireless and and I, I do admit that there are times when I do use wireless and it works okay but when you start to do heavy-duty things on it, I know this is off the the beaten trail of what I've been telling here about cables but when you start transferring you know large files like gigabit or well maybe not gigabyte but let's just say uh, four gigabytes it's a lot of information and if you start transferring a hundred gigabytes hundred gigabytes is gonna knock your wireless off unless you have some router that is very powerful and reliable to handle all that information, but I just don't see how wireless can handle it. it, it it's too hard to explain to you what about wireless, why it drops, but it's just, it's interference, it's what have you, it's just in your walls, I mean you got things going from room to room, each wall is going to degrade your signal by so much, I can't, I'm not going to say 50%, because I, I don't know, I mean it depends on how thick your walls are, how much insulation you've got in it, if you're going through th th through floors uh, to get to your your computer or phone that you're accessing. But anyhow, when when I'm telling you about the, these cables, I recommend that the old 
and proven technology, which is the old landline phones, stay with the, the copper cable. That's your best bet over fiber. Now, if they had, like, let me just give you an example. But if, if, if you were to transfer fiber, or you know, the, the copper to fiber optics, and then from fiber optics, it went to fiber optics, that would be one thing. But to transfer uh, copper in, into fiber optics back to copper, it's, it's no sense. It's actually hindering your quality and your speed and reliability. And it's more annoying. So I hope you got some good information out of this video. It's, it's been very frustrating for me to figure out what this, why I've been having so many issues with that phone system I have. And that's why it's that fiber optic converter. It's junk. No, you don't, no use. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might just switch back. I might just wait for the thing to clock out. Then I'll switch back because I've got plenty enough uh, phone cable to get my stuff reconnected without a problem. So I hope you like this video, you tell other people, you like and subscribe on YouTube. If you don't like it, just hit the freaking thumbs down and tell people you don't like this video. But I don't know how you're going to do that when you don't even vote at all. So, <laughs> I mean, you can wander off and I don't, I mean, it doesn't bother me, but, uh, you know, at least I know that you either liked it or you didn't like it. So I'll catch you on the next uh, video and stay tuned because this is just kind of a brief in, uh, intermission between the smart TV stuff. I've got so much to do with that that I don't have enough time. This is just a short video on copper, you know, fiber optics versus copper. And uh, I'll see you next time on the next Pushing Technology to the Limit video. I hope you have a wonderful day.